Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another video for Dauntless. The Founders Alpha is just one day away now, so for those of you guys either looking to jump in and play, or just tune in and watch some live streams to get a better feel for the game, either way, you don't have long to wait. Hopefully by now you've seen some of the videos I've been uploading, but today we are going to be rounding out the weapon tutorials that I've been putting together to give you a better understanding of the four available before you dive into the Alpha. So far we've covered the fast and nimble chain blades, the slower but very powerful axe and also the more balanced sword offering both speed and damage. But with those out of the way, all that remains now is the hammer, which is also, by the way, part gun. <laughs> This video should help provide you a good understanding of the weapon, how it plays, and how you should be using it if you want to get the most out of it in your alpha playtime. Of course, if you do find this useful, then a like would be super appreciated, and be sure to comment down below if you have any questions. Also, now that you've seen all four weapons in action, which one do you guys like the most? What is going to be your first choice when jumping into the alpha? Now, to begin with, the hammer is the other heavy hitting offering in Dauntless. Where the chain blades are about speed, and the sword offers a healthy blend of both speed and damage, the axe and hammer are your big hitters, slower but more powerful with every hit. That being said, if I had to classify the weapon in terms of difficulty, I would say the hammer is the hardest weapon to master. Sword is, without a doubt, the easiest weapon to pick up. Chain blades and axe are a little tougher, since good use of them will also rely heavily on good stamina management. Meanwhile the hammer… the hammer is a little different. See on the moves front, it is actually pretty simple. In fact, it has by far the simplest moveset of the lot. All your combos come from X inputs, so there's not a great deal to remember. The difficulty with the hammer lies in understanding your timings. We'll get into the finer details shortly, but essentially in order to pull off a full hammer combo, you're going to have to have a good understanding of the behemoth that you're fighting, and also you're going to need to be on point with your positioning. Mastery of this will allow you to successfully be in the right place at the right time in order to pull off a full combo end to end. Meanwhile, if you're not able to do this, then you're going to find yourself either rolling out of the way a lot of the time mid-combo, or just getting hit in the process. That being said, if you can overcome this, then it is a very powerful weapon, great at breaking behemoth's faces, and in general, dishing out some seriously high damage. To begin with, as stated in my last tutorial, I'll be explaining all the moves in these videos with controller input since that is how I play the game, but in the event you decide to play mouse and keyboard then quite simply, X is left mouse button, Y is right mouse button, RB is Q and B is space. Now for the hammer, as I mentioned at the start of the video, it is not just a hammer, it is also a gun. Your hammer attacks are on X, meanwhile anytime you press Y you'll fire out a shot from the gun component of the weapon. By default you have 4 shells in your magazine so to speak, and once you fire these out you will need to reload, which can be done by pressing RB. Reloading works around an active reload window, this bar will appear at the top of the screen. If you press RB a second time when the cursor is in this small block, it'll go green, and this is by far the quickest way to reload. Meanwhile if you get it wrong, it'll go red, then this is the slower reload and you'll also be rooted to the ground in the process. This is less than ideal, and if you do this while you're being charged at, then you're probably going to get hit. Turning your attention to the moves, your first combo is called Horizontal Hammers, and it's performed quite simply by inputting 3x attacks while standing still. This is one of your two slowest combos, but it's also one of your two highest damage dealers. Taking a look at the timing, you can begin to see now why I said that you'll need a good understanding of the Behemoth. They rarely stand still for this long, unless they are exhausted, knocked down, or roaring. So if you want to pull this off in full, then you really need to be able to read the Behemoth and essentially anticipate where it's going to be facing when it finishes its move so you can then begin the combo. Second to this, you then have the Lunging Strikes. This attacks in a more vertical pattern as performed by pushing forwards, then 3x inputs. Given the vertical nature, it is good at reaching targets a little higher up, like Pangar, but it also requires a lot more precision given that there's no huge sweeping attack at the beginning like on the Horizontal Hammers. This is however your other high damage output combo, and in truth it's the one that I use the most, simply because it's quite natural to flow into it. You run around the battlefield, sprint towards a behemoth, and you're naturally pushing forwards. It is worth calling out that you can roll out mid combo, and this applies to any of your moves. Since it takes a lot of time to complete a combo, sometimes you need to abort. So this is where you need to learn to roll out mid hits, or better yet, time your iframes to roll through attacks. In a game like this, it's about playing smart and safe. It's better to get in, and get off two hits and then get it out alive rather than attempting to overcommit to complete the combo and get hit or even knocked out in the process. 
You'll have to adopt a very hit and run strategy with the hammer. Sometimes you might sneak in one or two hits here and there, and then gradually, the more comfortable you feel, you'll begin to see more opportunities open up. Anyway, moving over to the third and final combo, you have Repeating Uppercut. This is performed with a stationary X to begin with, and you then push forward into two subsequent X inputs. This is actually your weakest combo, but it's also your fastest. So if you want to complete a combo and you knew the timing was tight, this is the one you would lean on. However, there is actually another reason that you'll use this as well. See, I mentioned earlier that your Y attacks fire off gunshots. You can work these into your combos should you want to. You could fire off a shell after a single swing of the hammer, but the real value comes in using this at the end of a combo. See, if you complete any of the 3x combos and then press Y at the end, you'll instead unload all of your shells that you have loaded. So if you have all four, then you can go from a full combo into a huge explosion. Your gunshots are one of the main ways you'll be dishing out elemental damage, so that in itself provides value. But when you also factor in the high damage of a full hammer combo plus a full blown elemental blast, you've got a pretty lethal recipe. For the first two combos, your explosion comes out in front of you. Meanwhile, the weaker repeating uppercut, if you fire off a full burst at the end of this, it actually shoots slightly more vertically. So again, it's great for targets that stand a little taller, like Pangar. So mastery of the hammer will rely on both an understanding of the behemoth, but also an understanding of your combos, their timings, their uses, and how they'll suit different targets. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about for the hammer are a couple of your aerial options. With your hammer drawn, if you're sprinting and you press Y, you will fire off a shell and launch yourself into the air. From here, you have two options. Pressing Y a second time in rapid succession will use another shell to provide you with a further boost. You can only use two shells, so you're limited to how far you can go, but this is a great way to either close the gap if you're running towards a behemoth, or alternatively, a good way to get out if you're in danger. Note that if you want to do this, you have to press the Y button in quick succession. You can't delay the second shot for a boost later. It has to be instant. Alternatively, following the Y input, you can instead press X to go into the aerial strike. This also dishes out elemental damage, this time from your hammer. So it's a great opener, paired again with a great means to cover ground. Additionally, once this aerial strike has landed, you can then flow straight into any of your three combos. Do of course bear in mind, these attacks do fire off shells, so try to be mindful of how many you have left and reload frequently. The last thing you want to do is find yourself with a nice opening, with enough time to pull off a full combo, only to find you forgot to reload and therefore can't finish it with a nice elemental burst. That would be bad. Since you can run and reload, then you should always aim to stay top top in between engagements. Now that's pretty much all there is for the hammer. It really is one of those weapons that is best described as easy to use, hard to master. High level hammer play will be heavily reliant on an understanding of the behemoths, their move patterns and their tells. But on top of that, it's also about knowing when to strike and when to get out. While full combos are obviously best for damage, if you're dead then you're no use to anybody. Learning to adopt the hit and run strategy is going to be super important. Every swing of the hammer is powerful, so even if you just chip away at the behemoth, sneak in a couple of hits on the head, roll out, live to fight another day, that is much better than getting smacked around the stage. It's also worth calling out that your hammer does blunt damage. Meanwhile, the other weapons are cutting types, so the hammer is uniquely qualified to break faces and take names. Okay, that last bit I made up, but genuinely, it is good at breaking faces, horns, spines, other parts like that. Just leave the tail cuts to the blade users. But that, my friends, is pretty much it. You now have videos for all four weapons. If you've missed any of them, then I will link the others down below. But for the time being, hopefully these videos have been helpful. If you're jumping into the alpha, let me know. And if you still want to see some more gameplay, then I should be streaming at some point tomorrow. It's a little hectic right now since games coming next week, but I will be going live for a bit to show you guys what it's all about. But until then, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.